In this video, we're going to look at another example of how we can use Thevenin's theorem to simplify a more complicated circuit into a Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, we've looked at two previous videos where, first of all, we introduced the topic of Thevenin's theorem and then looked at a slightly more complicated example. But in this video, we're going to look at something that's slightly more difficult again, because if you look at the example circuit we have here, we have a circuit that has two sources of voltage. We've got a cell on the left-hand side, a 12-volt cell, which I've labelled VA. And on the right-hand side, another cell, um, VB, uh, which has a value of 10 volts. And so this complicates matters a little bit. Um, we're going to try and deal with this problem by using something called the superposition principle. And the superposition principle involves making our lives a little bit easier by only dealing with one power source at a time. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll work out the values in this circuit just using the left-hand uh, power supply, VA, and we'll ignore the power supply on the right-hand side, VB. And then we'll do the opposite. We'll look at addressing this circuit with power supply VB, ignoring VA. And at the, then at the end, we'll bring our two sets of results together to get the total answer. So let's have a look first of all at how we can simplify this circuit by removing um, VB from the, the equation for a moment and just dealing with VA. If we imagine just having VA in the circuit and short circuiting VB, so if you imagine almost just taking out VB here, which I'll do now, I'll remove it from our circuit, and I'll replace it with a short circuit. So SC, just for short circuit there, I've removed VB from the equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow through the same steps of Thevenin's theorem again. Now, if you're not sure about these three steps, I would recommend going back and looking at the previous two videos. But the first step was to measure the voltage across the output terminals. Um, using the voltage divider rule. Now, if you have a look in this example, the uh, output terminals are in the middle of our circuit here, uh, terminal A and terminal B. So this makes things a little bit more different from what we've looked at in our previous examples, but removing one of our power supplies hopefully makes this a little bit easier because what we can do is we can just imagine that VB, um, because there's only a wire around these, this outside section now, we could easily imagine that VB doesn't have to be connected at this, this position at the bottom here. It could just as easily be up here. And so if we try and visualize this a little bit, we can imagine that our output terminals A and B are essentially measuring across R2. So when we set up our potential divider rule, we're going to take this into account. We're going to say that, like in our previous example, the Thevenin voltage, which I'll call V. TH, but I'll call it VTH brackets A, just because I'm only dealing with this left-hand side power supply for now. So VTH A is equal to the supply voltage, which is 12, multiplied by a fraction. And on the top of that fraction, I put whichever resistor I'm measuring across. And though it doesn't look so obvious in this example, we can see just by thinking about where B is connected and how it could just as easily be connected uh, around here, we can see that we're measuring really across R2. So R2 goes on the top of our fraction, so 390 uh, on the top there. And on the bottom, both resistors added together, so 220 plus 390. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 7.67 volts. So 7.67 volts. So now that I've calculated this, I want to go back now and consider the other side of this equation, which is by dealing with the right-hand power supply, VB. Uh, and then finally, we're going to add our results together at the end. So going back to our original diagram, um, we're now going to look at VB, and we're going to ignore VA. So we're going to do the opposite to what we did before. We're going to remove uh, VA from our... Um, from our circuit there. And we're going to replace it with a short circuit, much like we did before. Uh, so I'll label that short circuit. And we're going to imagine the same thing again, in that our, our terminals now, A and B, 
uh, we could just as easily imagine them being connected across R1 because B, um, there's only a wire uh, between these points here and so so terminal B could easily just be um, connected here when measuring across from terminal A to terminal B when measuring across R1 and so again we're going to set up our potential divider rule to take that into account so our feminine um, voltage uh, but just for power supply B so VTH brackets B is equal to the supply voltage 10 multiplied by a fraction on the top of that fraction I've said I'm measuring across R1 so 220 goes on the top and on the bottom both resistors added together 220 plus 390 and when I work this out I get a result of 3.61 volts 3.61 volts so finally my total Thevenin voltage which I'll just call VTH is equal to the Thevenin voltage that I got from power supply A so VTH A plus the Thevenin voltage that I got from power supply B VTH B and we said from the previous slide VTH A was 7.67 uh, volts and VTHB we got above there 3.61 volts which gives me a total Thevenin voltage of 11.28 volts so we've calculated our Thevenin voltage there by using this idea of superposition we've dealt with one power supply and then we've dealt with the other and we've added the results together so that's step one of Thevenin's theorem to determine the voltage across those output terminals. Now step two was to consider the um, Thevenin resistance by working out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. So again, think about this diagram here with both power supplies back in. Um, the, the step two asks us to short out all power supplies. So in fact, what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to remove um, both power supplies from this circuit and I'm going to replace them both with a short circuit. So we'll get something that looks like this. We've got a short circuit on either side. And then we're asked to work out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. Well, let's deal with that because it's important where we start and where we finish in this circuit. So starting at terminal A, we travel first of all upwards uh, and we reach a junction straight away where we can either go to the left through R1 and back round to B or we can go to the right through R2 and back round to B. And because there's a split there, because there are two different paths, we have to say that those two resistors must be in parallel. So what we can say now is that the Thevenin resistance, RTH, is equal to R1 in parallel with R2. Now that double slash is my shorthand there, uh, just like in previous videos, for parallel resistors. And again, if you're not sure about how to work out parallel resistors, I would recommend going back to the video where we cover that. But uh, I calculate uh, these two resistors in parallel. So what we had there was 220 in parallel with 390. I calculate that to give me a Thevenin resistance of 140.8. 66 ohms. So now what I can do is I can draw my feminine equivalent circuit. So the feminine equivalent circuit had one DC power supply, which looks like that. Uh, it had one resistor in uh, series, like so. And so my feminine equivalent circuit looks like this. But I can mark on some values here because we know that the feminine uh, voltage came to 11.28 volts and we can also say the feminine resistance came to 140.66 ohms and so like I said in previous videos this circuit is meant to be completely equivalent to the previous circuit that we had um, it'll give the same uh, output voltage on the terminals it'll give the same uh, current across the terminals if we if we um, 
connect uh, an ammeter across those terminals there. Uh, it'll give the same resistance or impedance on those terminals, whatever we want. The, the, the two circuits should be completely equivalent to one another. One last thing I want to do, though, is just like I did in the previous video, let's consider that we close this circuit because at the minute it's an open circuit. We're going to make it a closed circuit by adding a load resistor um, across those terminals. So RL is my load resistor. And let's say that RL has a resistance of 50 ohms. Well, again, like in the previous video, Adding that load resistor is going to change this circuit a little bit. It's going to change the voltages, first of all. It's going to allow a current to flow. And we're going to calculate some of those parameters uh, in this last section here. So first of all, let's calculate the voltage across that load resistor. Because by adding that load resistor in, we're going to change the voltage across, that, across those terminals. And we have to use the voltage divider rule again. So let's set that up below here we'll say that the voltage across the load VL is the supply voltage 11.28 multiplied by a fraction well what are we going to put on top of that fraction well we're measuring across the load resistor um, we're wanting to work out this voltage from A to B um, so by putting uh, 50 on the top we know that we're measuring the right voltage there um, on the bottom, we put both resistors added together, so 140.66 plus 50. This gives me a total voltage across the load of 2.96 volts. So we'll say that that's equal to 2.96 volts. So just by adding that load resistor in, we've changed the voltage across those terminals there. Next we can do is work out the current in this circuit. Because it's a complete circuit now, there's going to be a current that flows around this circuit, current I, and we can calculate I uh, just using Ohm's law. So we can say, first of all, that I equals V over R. And the voltage in this circuit, that supply voltage that we calculated there, 11.28 volts. So we can say that V is 11.28 and we divide that by the resistance in this circuit. Well, I have two resistors in this circuit, and so I have to make sure that I use the total resistance. I have 140.66, and I have a 50 ohm resistor. So the total resistor, uh, the total resistance rather, is going to be 190.66. I'm using the total resistance there, and that's going to give me uh, a supply current of uh, 59.16 times 10 to the minus 3, or 59.16 milliamps. Finally, just as we did in the last uh, example, we can calculate the power in the load resistor. So we're just looking at the power that's dissipated in this resistor, and I want to call it PL, the power in the load. And to do that, we know that power is voltage times current. So... We can set that up again, uh, P equals V times I, and we have to say that we're working at the power in the load, so PL, we have to use the voltage across the load, and I is the same current throughout, so that doesn't really matter too much. Um, so PL equals VL times I, well we know that VL is 2.96, we, we calculated that on the left hand side there, so 2.96 multiplied by I, we said was 59.16 milliamps, which is 59.16 times 10 to the minus 3. And that gives me an answer of 0.175 watts, or better yet, we can say 175 milliwatts. So we've calculated the power in the load resistor there. Hopefully, this uh, example of using Thevenin's theorem to simplify more complicated circuits that involve two power supplies has been useful. Like I said previously, if you haven't already, I would recommend going back and watching the first two videos where we look at other examples as well.